Your words can sink you, synchronize, or they can sink you. That's from James chapter 3, verse 2. And the little line underneath it is part of the verse. It says, I summarize it. It says, rule your tongue and you'll rule your body. So we all know the power of our words. Life and death is in our tongue, right? Death and life in the power of our tongue. Choose life. Careful what you say. And we don't want to be hung up and all legalistic about this. You have to be really careful that you don't get weird. Sorry. I'm, I'm just trying to keep it real. You want to make sure the fountain of your heart is pure before the Lord. Think of the example Jesus gave with the trees. He said, your outward actions are based on the fruit of your, on the roots of your life. Excuse me. Your outward actions are like the fruit on the tree. And the cause of those actions is based in the roots of your life. So if you don't like the fruit, if you've got some bad fruit coming off, you can do something about it. You can get to the roots of that thing. And what comes out of your mouth starts somewhere in the root system of your life. Not just what you know, but what you believe. It's a big difference to know something and to believe it enough to actually do it. Can I stay here for a second? My father smoked two packs of Pall Mall cigarettes a day for 45 years from the way I heard it. They didn't even have a filter on them. And he was a diesel mechanic, and he had to fix the trucks of our family business in a closed garage. So he was breathing all this diesel smoke and smoking cigarettes on top. Like, man, I must have some strong relatives. So he lasted as long as he did. And we would say, Dad, we're concerned about your health, man. Don't you think you should quit smoking? See, he knew up here that he should quit. But he didn't believe it enough to actually stop. Then he had a heart attack. And he was laid out on the floor at our house. And I won't go into details, but he died. And then came back to life. And those of you that know anything about medicine, you know that if somebody discharges, they died. That sphincter valve opens up. That's as gross as I'm going to get right now. But he was gone. And he came back. He never smoked another cigarette after that. I'm just saying. See, he went from knowing to believing. <laughs> I don't want to wait till I have a heart attack to change my behavior. In Jesus' name, I'm not speaking that over myself. So I'm, I'm going to kind of just go through some verses quickly and then... A couple of examples. So this is the verse that I quoted, James 3 in the Amplified. And the way to remember it is just synchronizing your words. It's what you say. Out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth will speak. The heart has the roots. So guard your heart. For out of it flow the issues of life. Our words really matter. And with this cancel culture, more than ever, your words really matter. And it doesn't mean just stay locked down and don't talk. It means measure it. Be rule over your spirit, right? It says in Proverbs, when you can rule over your spirit, you have defenses. But a person who doesn't rule their spirit, and with words it could be because you get emotionally hijacked and your temper flares, now all of a sudden you're not ruling your spirit. That gorilla got out of the cage, and he's making some noise. And you're going to regret what you say when he's in charge, right? Keep the cockpit door locked. Don't let him in. See? Walk away. Don't allow yourself to be hijacked. It doesn't mean you can't be firm with people. You speak the truth, but you do it in love. So James said, we all stumble and sin in many ways. Anybody want to say amen? That's not one of those big amen lines, but I ask. We all stumble and sin in many ways. If anyone doesn't stumble in what he says never saying the wrong thing, then he's a perfect man or a perfect woman. And that's, that doesn't mean flawless. It means mature. It means measured. It means you've gone through training. Like in our Air Force, when you sign up to be a pilot, you don't just get the keys to the plane. You've got to go through training. You have to pass a bunch of tests, right? So we do too. Why would it be any different? You think God is just flip about who stands up here and speaks to you? No, because... The church is vulnerable. And, and he, you know, the people up here better be tested and tried beforehand or else the people get hurt. And he loves you too much for you to want to get hurt. 
All right, perfect man. Well, okay, fully developed in character, without serious flaws, able to bridle his whole body and reign in his entire nature, taming his human faults and weaknesses. That's one verse in the Amplified. <laughs> James 3.2. This is the word in the Greek. It's called teleos, which is derived from telos. Anybody ever heard that word, telos? What it means, you'll, you'll hear philosophers talk about it, and I don't mean that in some... Uh, like ethereal, academic way. Philosophy is, everybody has a philosophy. You've got a worldview in your life, right? That's what that means. Tell us is, what are you aiming at? What does a good day look for you? Look like for you, I should say. Well, a lot of us are aiming too low. Okay, now we should say, I want to make sure when I die, I go to heaven. Yes, for sure. That's a good aim. But what about, I want to be more like Jesus today than I was yesterday. That's a really good tell us. That's a good aim to be shooting at. And the more I can't rule my mouth, the less likely it is that I'm going to hit that aim. Because he never sinned. And he was even angry. Because some people think anger is a sin. It's not a sin. But boy, it's close. <laughs> For a lot of us, you could sin pretty easily. He was angry and never sinned. So it's possible to do it within the container of Holy Spirit wisdom, but it's not easy, is it, church? Let's just be real. It's not easy. So consummated goal is tell us. And listen, if we all just got real honest with each other, we have a goal every day when we wake up. God's saying, aim higher. Aim for Christ. He's the role model that you want to be like. And in 2 Corinthians 3.18, it says, we are being transformed into the image of Christ with ever-increasing glory. Yeah. That's not a bad mission statement for you right there, every day. And you can hold each other accountable. My wife and I can, can say, I love you. And because I love you, I just don't think that was aiming at Christ right there. I think the gorilla, she would say to me, got out of the cage. And, and that wasn't, you know, an, an A plus to be like Jesus. Maybe not an F. Maybe it was an F. But, you know, we have a no-cut contract, so we're stuck together like glue. 37 years. Mature from going through the necessary stages. Oh, man. I have to go through necessary stages to reach the end goal. Developed into completion by fulfilling the necessary process. Oh, that's word. Nobody likes it. I got saved. I'm a new creation in Christ. I'm going to heaven. That's all. Not. No. That's not all. You're going to be an ambassador for the kingdom. And the more you're like Jesus, the more effective you're going to be. We've had so many people in the last few weeks here. We were in New York City. We did an outreach in Times Square. It was amazing. And, and people were witnessing on the street, leading people to the Lord. We said Wednesday night our drummer got healed at, at a different event that was going on. And, and when you're out on the street and you're seeing God move, you don't ever want to go back to boring, mediocre Christianity. Because you want to be used by God while you're here. You have a window of time while you're here. And then it says about David, he served his generation during his time, and then he was called home. Well, we're here now to serve our generation in this time. And everybody's gift is different. But we want you all to flourish in your gifting. Glad you said amen to that. <laughs> and then the, uh, the, this dictionary I looked at said, think of this telescope that the sailors used to use back in the old days, remember? And he said, this idea is well illustrated with the old sailor's telescope of unfolding and extending out one stage at a time until it functions at full strength. So all four of those cylinders got to click into place before you can focus. All right? So don't, don't hate the journey of maturing in Christ. It's an amazing journey. 